Hey there! Welcome to Daybird Aviaries. I hope you're doing well. In today's video, we're going to sex our birds. Now, a lot of people think that they can sex their birds at home. And sometimes this is true, but sometimes you just can't sex your birds at home. Sometimes you have to rely on professional help to sex your birds. Now, there are some people that think that you can dangle a crystal above your bird and that, that somehow sexes them, whether it, it swings or goes in a circle. But I tell you, I just really, I can't believe that. Um, other people think you can um, put your finger in a certain place of your bird and determine if it's a boy or a girl. That doesn't work either. Now there are certain times, certain instances with certain species of birds where you can sex your birds yourself at home. Like with chickens, adult chickens. I'm not talking about juvenile silkies. Those are something entirely different all on their own. But Rhode Island red chickens, you know, you have a rooster and you know what a rooster is and you have a hen and you know what a hen is. Birds like that are referred to as being sexually dimorphic. That means that you can look at them and you can tell which is the rooster and which is the hen. You know, a lot of times with pigeons, you know, if you're not familiar with pigeons, you look at a flock of pigeons and they all just look the same. But if you spend time, you can tell which are the males and which are the females. The females are, are just, if they're all the same breed type of pigeon, the females are just a little bit smaller. The males are a little bit bigger. Males have thicker necks. They have some double chin action going on. Females have thin necks and small, dainty heads. A lot of people say that they can tell that the female has a flat head and the male has a domed head. I think a lot of those tricks hold true for sexing your pigeon. Um, as far as parrots go, there are sexually dimorphic parrots, like um, the Barabans parakeet. I used to have, have those. I bred them for a long time. Um, before I went to Romania, I miss them. I wish I could get them again. The males are bright green with a bright yellow and red head. Beautiful, beautiful birds. And females, well, females are pretty too. They're kind of a, a dull olive color. But they're, they're nice in their own right. And then you have the eclectus parents. The males just bright green all over, emerald green. And the female, she's red and purple and blue and just spectacularly stunning. Those birds are sexually dimorphic. And then we have the Indian ringneck parrot. Now, when they're fully mature, on most mutations, there are some exceptions. You can tell a male from a female because the male has the ring around his neck. That's how they get the name, ringneck parakeet. In other parts of the world, they're called rose-ringed parakeets because it's black in the front, but it's rosy in the back. The females don't have the ring. Most of the people that ask me if I have any ring necks for sale, once I say yes, their next question is either, how much is it, or do you have males? I only want a male. I generally tell them I don't, I don't, sex my birds, my, my Indian ringnecks, before I send them to their new home for that sole purpose. If I do, if I were to sex all of my birds before I sold them, I could ask a premium price for the males and I would sell every one within a day of putting it on Facebook. But even if I discounted the price, dirt cheap on the females, I'd still be left with a cage full of females. Sometimes it is necessary for me to determine the sex of a baby ringneck before it's fully mature, even before I sell them. Case in point, right now, I have two violet ringnecks, beautiful purple birds, 
beautiful birds. You've seen them on my Baby Bird Friday videos. And I need to determine the sex of those. Not so that I can sell a male at a higher price, but because I actually need to keep back a female. Now, if they're both males, I'm going to sell them. And I'm going to sell them at a premium price. Because my mama didn't raise a dummy. If they're both females, I'm going to be honest about it. I'm going to keep one. I may keep both. I may very well do that. But if I only keep the one, then I'll be honest and I'll tell the people, hey, this is a female, but this is her price. It is set in stone. If you don't want it, I'm sorry. But today I'm going to show you how to sex the birds. I go through avian biotech, which is a division of animal genetics. Now, it used to be that Avian Biotech was separate than Animal Genetics, but they kind of merged. They're down in Florida. They do DNA testing on cats and dogs to see if your puppy is going to be prone to hip dysplasia or to see if your cat is this, that, or the other. They do disease testing on birds, but mainly what they do, because most of the parrots that we have are monomorphic, one. They cannot look at them and tell by the color males from females, like you can a dimorphic bird, like the Eclectus or the Barabans parakeet, or a fully mature Indian ringneck. A baby Indian ringneck, you can't look at the color and tell male from female. And so I need the help from Avian Biotech. Go to their website, avianbiotech.com or animalgenetics.com. They're down in Tallahassee, Florida. Make sure you're at the right place. You have to request a sexing kit. Now this is to professionally sex your birds. No crystals, no fingering, none of that stuff. Get down to business, use some science, test the DNA, that's what we're doing. You can take a blood sample or you can take and send feathers in. It's cheaper to do a blood sample because it's cheaper to get the DNA from the blood than from a feather. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to collect a blood sample from these two violet Indian ringnecks. So let's show you what I've got. Here I have the submission form. And you can see what it says. You just fill out all that information at the top. Now if you don't have an account number, when you send in for the form, they're going to send you the account number. It's going to be on the shipping label. A brand new number just for you. It'll be on the shipping label on the outside of the envelope. And you find that number and you write it in here. Now, if for some reason you forget to do that, the good people there, they, they're smart enough, they can figure it out. But you just fill out all this information, one line at a time, and over here, you check which one of these services you want to have done for your bird. Do you just want DNA sexing, or do you want to test for any of these diseases? Now, they, they, they can test for other diseases, but they, they're, the blood sample collection is a little bit more involved. Then down at the bottom, you have all the payment information, and you fill that out according to how you want. A lot of times, I will just ask them to send me an invoice through PayPal, and then once they send me that invoice, I will uh, go ahead and immediately pay for it. You're going to send it to this address down here at the bottom. Make sure you fill out the correct thing. But also, if you have other birds at home, here's where you can order more test kits. And it's really, really simple to do to, to fill out this information. Up here, just make sure you get it all filled out. Now, what's going to come to get a blood test, you get this card. And this is a special type of paper. And it's in this nice sealed envelope. Each one's going to be in its own envelope. And you're going to fill out that information. You know, the species, the individual ID for the individual bird, and then your name. And that's going to correlate to the, the, the information you put here. And then you see down here at the bottom, that's where you're going to put the little drop of blood and then you're going to put it back down into the bag once it's all dry so we're going to go ahead and get started and i'm going to collect a sample from the baby
Okay, now, this is not for the squeamish. If you are have aversions to blood, then thank you so much for watching. Please go ahead and give us a thumbs up. Leave us some kind of nice comment. Make sure you're subscribed, but it's okay with me if you click off this video now. We are going to take a blood sample from this sweet little baby. Now, by the time I, I'm finished with this and I give her her supper, it's just going to be, uh, you know, a bad dream. You know, worst day of her life scenario. It's not going to be a bad, horrible, terrible thing. You know, if you can take your baby to the doctor and have a blood sample taken or a finger prick for diabetes or something, it's kind of the same way. The easiest way to take a blood sample from a baby bird is to clip a toenail too short. Now, if you've ever clipped a toenail for any kind of animal, you know that it, there's a quick inside that nail, inside that claw. And if you cut into that, then it's going to bleed. So, I'm just going to take a pair of nail clippers. Have some kind of blood stopping powder ready. Uh, you can use quick stop. You can use flour, corn starch, potato starch. Something of that nature, something that's going to help the the flow of blood to 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 stop easily. So hold the bird upside down, and she's going to to squirm. Have somebody help you if you need to. Have one toenail extended. Watch your little head, baby. You don't want to get that involved. Do not cut here. Can can you see? Don't cut all the way to there. You just want to take the little tip end off. And there may or may not be blood coming out. See, I didn't take enough off. So I'm going to take just a little bit more. Hey, baby. And I accidentally let go. So if I take this blood card. And you can see there is blood flowing. And you want to get enough on there, but you don't have to cover the whole card. You don't have to saturate the whole entire card. And I keep letting go because I keep looking at the camera. And I'm going to put some on this corner also. And with just that little sample right there, they're going to be able to analyze the chromosomes inside the bird, inside the blood of the bird, and determine if it is a male or a female. So you can see there's no blood dripping. Everything is okay. You can see I've already filled out the information, the band number, my name, and the species type of bird it is. When this is dry, I'm going to put it back inside the little baggie. But for now, I'm going to take just a little bit of this blood stopping powder. And I'm just going to hold it over the toe for just a, a quick second. And that's all there is to it. Now, if you've cut too deeply, you know, you may have to apply a little bit more pressure. If you cut way too deeply... I'm going to tell you a secret, okay? I'm not a veterinarian. I am not giving you veterinarian advice, okay? I'm giving you advice based on 30 some odd years of raising birds. Take a match. Have it, have it nearby if you need to, if you're worried or scared. Take a match. Light the match. Immediately blow the match out and immediately touch the hot tip of the match to the toenail where it's been cut and it will automatically cauterize the little wound. Now that's all there is to it. There's no trauma done to this little baby bird. No big deal. So I'm going to wait for this to completely dry, put it in this envelope, in this little baggie, fold it up with this, enclose some form of payment, Put it in an envelope with a stamp. Put it in the mailbox going to Tallahassee. You can check online on their website to see if they have received the sample and if they have actually gotten results yet.
Now, when you're doing this, make sure you're using some form of uh, sterile technique. If your birds are kept in dirty conditions, you may want to take a little alcohol wipe and swab their toenails clean. I have found that that prevents clotting, and so I generally don't do that. You want to make sure that the nail clippers are clean. Uh, dip them in alcohol if needed beforehand. If you're doing more than one bird, you're going to want multiple pairs of these so that you can have them clean in between. Because blood from one will contaminate not only the sample from the next bird, but it could actually spread disease to the next bird. So don't do that. Right now, I'm going to feed this little baby so that she, she will have no memory of this event whatsoever. Thank you for watching. God bless you. I love you. Bye-bye. No hokey pokey, okay?